30... Okay, hello. Hello, everyone. This is the second orthopedic station in Marcias. So let's start. Okay, Dr. Sahar, start. Okay. 30 years old woman is passenger car during accident. Her knee hits the dashboard on examination. The TPL blocks posterior compartment. Non-injured knee. What structure has been injured? Anterior crochet ligament, posterior crochet ligament, medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, patellar dentin. What's your answer? Mm. I think uh, the steric crochet ligament. Excellent. Exactly. So, uh, this mode of injury will push the knee backward. Uh, during hitting the dashboard when examination and doing uh, anterior drawer or posterior drawer test when the knee or the leg uh, uh, the tibia of the leg is moving backward so it is injury of the posterior crochet ligament when you anterior drawer test is positive and you pull the tibia anterior to the femur so this is anterior mm -hmm. Appreciate ligament tear. Okay. Next question. Dr. Nashid. Yes. A 32 year old man presents with painful swelling over the volar aspect of his hand after receiving a hard blow to his palm. On examination, he experiences pain on moving the wrist and on longitudinal compression of the thumb. What is the most likely injury? Bennett fracture, scaphoid fracture, hip metacarpal fracture, ganglion bursitis. Uh, scaphoid fracture. Exactly. Scaphoid fracture, pain movement of the wrist, and uh, uh, compression on the tip of the thumb uh, will induce pain. So it's a scaphoid fracture. Okay, next question. Oh, Dr. Krishna. Okay. Dr. Basharat, if you want to share. Okay, just anyone to anyone wants to share. So okay. Unmute yourself and start. Uh, which of the following is the first radiological change likely to appear in a plain radio radiograph of a 12-year-old um, presenting with suspected Perthes disease? The first option is uh, multiple bone cyst. Second is sclerosis. The one is loss of bone density of space narrowing. And the last one is collapse of the femoral head. And uh, I think I will go with the collapse of the femoral head. Any other? I have uh, confusion answer? between sclero I have confusion between sclerosis of the femoral head and the collapse of the femoral head. Okay, I shall, I can see three answer B. So answer is sclerosis of the femoral head. Femoral. It is yes, it is the right answer. Sclerosis of the femoral head is a radiograph sign in Peirce's disease. Okay, next question. Dr. Sahar again can start or any anyone wants to start 
can raise hand, please. Dr. Sahar, unmute yourself and start. Left and sustained spiral fracture of the mid shaft of tibia. Attempting to achieve satisfactory position and plaster have failed. Overlying tissue is healthy. What is the most appropriate course of action? Amputation, open reduction, and fixation using long plate. Intramedullary nail, skeletal traction, long limb casting. <clears throat> mm, I think intramedullary nail. Exactly. So, as soft tissue is yeah. intact, skin is intact and we have a spiral fracture with failed conservative treatment we go with the less invasive and less damaging maneuver which is intramedullary nail is the main um, treatment option here okay next question who wants to share Dr. Nashid, start. A 20-year-old woman sustains a holstein levis fracture, which nerve is at risk. Alna, radial, median, musculocutaneous, axillary, radial. Exactly. Where is the holstein levis fracture? Uh, it's a fracture in the lower third of the humerus. Exactly. So... Radial nerve is a common injury with this fracture. Next question, Dr. Basharat Saddal. Uh, I want to tell you something here that uh, in the mid shaft of the humor on the posterior surface, there is a radial groove where from the radial nerve uh, goes through. So this is the place where the most injuries are the radial nerve. Exactly. Okay. So next one can I start. Next question. Dr. Nashid, start. A 74-year-old lady falls and injures her left arm. Following assessment, she is found to have an impact fracture affecting the surgical neck of the humerus. What is the most appropriate course of action? Reduce the fracture and apply a plate to stabilize the fragment. Perform a hemiarthroplasty. Apply a collar and cuff system for three weeks and then commence physiotherapy. Apply an upper limb cast for eight weeks. Apply an external fixator system. Uh, C. Apply a collar and cuff system for three weeks and then commence physiotherapy. Exactly. If, if impacted fracture are more stable and with less complication. Mm -hmm. So we go direct for a conservative treatment with a color and cuff and start okay. early face use therapy. Okay, next question. Okay, Dr. Sahar, go. If anyone wants us to change, he can raise hand. So we'll start with Dr. Sahar and Dr. Nashid. Tell okay. anyone wants to share again. Okay, Dr. Sahar. Footballer sustain knee injury in March. And it's been assessed in outpatient department on examination. He has positive fulgus stress test and minimal joint effusion. What is the most likely underlying injury? Injury to the lateral collateral ligament, injury to medial collateral ligament, injury to anterior crochet ligament, injury to posterior crochet ligament, injury to patellar tendon. 
I think uh, positive fungus stress. I think uh, uh, injury to uh, uh, medially collateral ligament. Exactly. Medial collateral ligament will give us a positive valgus test. Mm -hmm. Injury to the lateral collateral ligament will give us a positive virus test. Okay, next question. Doctor, she wants to share. Uh, a 63 year old, uh, a 63 year nurse, old and extended and fully degraded. An x ray shows a distal radial fracture with radial copper dislocation. Which type of fracture is most likely? Mid fracture? Sorry. Mid fracture? Yes, fracture. Mm, anyone has any other answer? Bottom fracture. Barton's fracture. Okay. Yes, exactly. Barton's fracture. So let's stop here to just differentiate between um, Just you want to differentiate between three main fracture of the distal radius. We have what is called Smith's fracture and what is called Cooley's fracture and what is called Barton's fracture. Okay, Smith's fracture it is a fracture of the distal radius with volar displacement. Volar displacement. Placement according to the anatomical position of the body with the hand and the arm pronated and the part um, uh, fractured, distal part fracture will be volary, anteriorly displaced. Coolest fracture is fracture of the distal radius with the distal portion of the fracture dorsally displaced part on the fracture is fracture of the distal radius with intraarticular extension. Involvement of the radiocarpal bones or intraarticular extension. This will be called part of the fracture, whatever the displacement. Okay? Next question. Okay, Dr. Sahar or Dr. Nashid, you want to start? Okay. Seventy-two years old lady, stumpless and false. On examination, she is tender in the left groin and able to wait there. Attempt to internal rotation to produce severe pain. Plain pain of the hip should no obvious fracture. What is the best course of action? MRI scan, bone, scissors, radiography, conservative management, hip arthrodesis, total hip replacement. Uh, I think MRI scan. Exactly. So uh, in the UK, they like to start with the simplest investigation and then go directly. If you find no results, go direct for higher investigation. Don't start with MRI or CT unless required. Okay. So here's X-ray. 
our plane fell to the hip, so no obvious fracture. So we go direct to MRI. I can't go for bone centigraphy or hip bars or this. I have I have no problem discovered to go for the treatment. So I'm going to another investigation, which is the MRI scan. Next question, Dr. Nashid. Yes, a 19-year-old soldier had just returned from a prolonged marching exercise and present with a sudden onset severe pain in the forefoot. Clinical examination reveals tenderness along the second metatarsal. Um, plain X-ray are taken of that area. These demonstrate callus surrounding the shaft of the second metatarsal. What is the most likely diagnosis? Stress fracture, Morton's neuroma, osteochondroma, acute osteomyelitis, Freiberg's disease. I'm not sure. Maybe it's stress fracture. Exactly. Okay, this is the only question you'll face. Um, telling a soldier returned from prolonged mm -hmm. marching. So just you will have no other scenario will confuse you except this one, which is stress fracture or what its name is Marche fracture coming from prolonged marching exercise. Stress fracture or Marche fracture is the name, the same name for this, this fracture. Okay, next question. Okay. Yeah. Anyone from the new participant want to share? Can raise hand, please. So, go, Dr. Sahar again. Uh, 70 years old women is discharged following fracture neck of femur. In review, she is more than good progress, but consideration is given to the secondary prevention of the further fracture. And currently, the or two geriatrician or all on annually leave. And consult has asked you to arrange a suitable management, which is the best option. Alendronate uh, P, alendronate, calcium, and vitamin D supplementation. C, strontium. D, arrange the DEXA scan. A, hormonal replacement th therapy. Mm, I think uh, B. Yeah, exactly. This is a repeated question since yesterday, but with the change of the name of the drugs. Uh, calcium, vitamin D, and aldronate, alendronate, or bisphosphonate, it is a big family. Okay, so alendronate or bisphosphonate is the same family. Next question. Dr. Nashid. Which of the following statement, statements relating to a vascular necrosis is false? When associated with fracture may occur despite the radiological evidence of fracture union. Pain and stiffness will typically precede radiological evidence of this condition. Drilling of the affected bone, bony fragments may be used to facilitate angiogenesis where arthroplasty is not warranted. The earliest detectable radiological evidence is a radiolucency of the affected area coupled with subchondral, subchondral collapse. It is less likely when prompt anatomical alignment of fracture fragments is, is achieved. Uh, it's D. The earliest detectable radiological evidence is a radiolucency of the affected area coupled with subchondral collapse. Exactly. Uh, this is late changes. Uh, Avascular necrosis has no radiological signs in early stages. Next question. Dr. Shi. 
a twenty-eight-year-old man falls onto an outstretched hand. On examination, there is some of the anatomical snuff bugs. However, forearm and hand x-rays on the whole body show that the man fell into a pit of water. What is the most appropriate course of action? Discharge the reactionment, place in oxygen and discharge, place in treatment in a regular infectious clinic, and for surgical exploration, apply in a regular place in the treatment in a regular infectious clinic. Sorry, what's your suspected injury here? Exactly. So answer is exactly place and fracture splint and review in the fracture clinic. Exactly, Ajay scaphoid fracture. Next question. Okay, doctor. Nashid or Dr. Sahar? Six years old boy present with the groin pain. He is now to be disruptive in class. He reported pain for pain short. An examination, he has antalgia gait and pain on internal rotation of right hip. What is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, I think Perth is diseased. Exactly. Six years old, present with groin pain and some problems in loss and um, antalgic gait. So this is the age of Perth's disease. For reminder, again, we have three main problems in pediatric, which is Pears' disease, slipped upper femur epiphysis, and um, developmental dysplasia of the hip, DDH. Uh, Pears' disease is common in six, six, seven, eight, up to from six to nine, sometimes five in this young age uh, group and patient will come with head pain or sometimes the patient come with knee pain and on examination the knee is free and the patient has tenderness on his hip and he's coming with antalgic gait. Developmental dysplasia of the hip, DDH. They will give you any age group, but he will mention in the scenario that the patient has a difficult breach delivery. Difficult breach delivery. DDH. Third one is slipped upper femoral epiphysis or cap. And this is what happen with heavy weight. So the cap will slip and you will find a patient 12, 13, 14 years obese. So obese patient, child, 12 or 13 or 14 years, come with hip pain or sometimes come with knee pain and on examination, the knee is free, tenderness on the hip, and come with antalgic gait. So from the heavy weight, he will have slept of the upper femoral epiphysis or cap. Okay, next question. Okay, start the formation. An 86-year-old retired pharmacist is admitted to emergency department following a fall. She complains of right hip pain. She is known to have hypertension and is currently on benzofluoride. She lives alone and mobilizes with a Zimmer frame. Her right leg is shortened and externally rotated. A hip x-ray confirms a displaced intracapsular fracture. What is the best management option? Dynamic hip screw, gamma nail, total hip replacement, hemiarthroplasty, percutaneous feeding. It's hemiarthroplasty. 
why hemiarsoplasty uh, because it's intracapsular fracture so we have to go in um, go for uh, any operative measure and uh, because she uh, is like she lives alone and she is mobilized with a zimmer frame so Mm, these are all against the total hip replacement. And he is, uh, her age is 86. Okay, when we do total hip? Uh, we do total hip replacement if the patient is uh, uh, mobilized with, um, can, uh, um, can move without any support or uh, if her uh, physical, the patient's physical condition is uh, supportive enough to withstand the long surgery like total hip replacement okay um, patient uh, and younger the, age younger age more, younger age yeah. Yeah. okay so more than 80 more than 80 he will tell you if the yes, patient is 80. active playing golf or, or um, yeah. playing football yeah. so we'll go for total if the patient is just uh, home uh, settled and non-active, you will go for hemiarthroplasty. Young patient, less than 80, he will give you 74, 65, 70. You will go direct for total hip replacement. Okay. Why would they choose this? Because this is displaced intracapsular fracture. Intracapsular yes. fracture, we have to go for hip replacement. When we do yes. dynamic hip screw. It's extracapsular fracture. Especially where if, exactly? Uh, it's, uh, the it's especially if it's like uh, the part trochanteric, intertrochanteric fracture. Intertrochanteric fracture. Okay. So trochanteric fracture, extra capsular, we'll go for dynamic hip screw. Okay. Percutaneous spinning or screwing, where when we do this? Percutaneous spinning or screwing is. Uh... Okay, it's like uh, in the in uh, in the intracapsular fracture uh, when a uh, patient is young and it's uh, not displaced. Exactly, exactly. And what we do in subcortical fractures? In subcortical fracture, it's intramedullary nail. Exactly. Very good. Excellent. Next. Who wants to start, Dr. Yusuf, want to share with us? Dr. Yusuf, are you ready or no? Dr. Basharat, can you start? Uh, which type of fracture is seen uh, when a 22-year-old uh, drunk man is involved in a fight and injures his thumb when he punches his opponent? A is Barton's, B is Bennett's, C is Galezi, D is Coley's, and uh, E is Smith's. It is a Bennett's fracture because uh, most of the most common it is associated with the uh, when in fighting with doing uh, there is fracture of the uh, first metacarpal. Okay, fracture base of hips, metacarpal, uh, of first metacarpal is Bennett's fracture, Bennett's. or sometimes is what we call boxer fracture. Yeah. Sometimes. Yes, boxer. Okay, so this man, he told you this is in a fight, and the sample when he punched his opponent, he has this fracture. Okay, again, just fast revision, what is Barton's fracture? Uh, Barton's fracture is the distal radius uh, with the displacement of the radio ulnar joint. Uh, Galezi, uh, sorry, for first coming to the Coley's. Coley's fracture is the radial fracture with the dorsal displacement of the um, uh, radial ulnar. And Smith's is the volar displacement. Uh, Galezi's fracture, there is a radial fracture with the uh, displacement of the radio ulnar joint, uh, proximal, I think, distal. And there is another one, Montagi. Montagi, there is ulnar fracture with displacement of the proximal radio ulnar joint. Exactly, excellent, doctor. Next question. Okay, Dr. Sahar. Uh, for years, old boy falls unsustained fracture to the growth blade of right wrist. 
what is the following system is used to classify the injury? Uh, Salter, I think Salter Harris system. Perfect. Okay. I am Salter Harris system. What is the most um, typical or close uh, types? which will appear, which will have the same appearance on X-ray. We have five subtypes, okay? One to five. five. Exactly. One is through the cross plate and five is compression of the cross plate. So both of them in X-ray will be almost the same. And what is Weber's fracture? What Weber's classification? Uh, Malular. Uh, Lateral malleolar fracture. Yes. Okay, Gastel Anderson fraction uh, system. Uh, compound fracture. Open fracture. Open fracture. Open fracture. Okay, that's what is the most we will face an orthopedic MRS, MRS, yes. Okay. Who's next? Who wants to share? No new participants want to share? Okay, Dr. Nashid, go ahead. A 43-year-old man falls over landing on his left hand. Although there was anatomical snap of tenderness, no x-rays either at the time or subsequently have shown evidence of scaphoid fracture. He has been immobilized in a future splint for two weeks and is now asymptomatic. What is the most appropriate course of action? Application of tubic grip bandage and fracture clinic review, admission and surgical debridement, application of future splint and fracture clinic review, application of below elbow care uh, for six weeks, discharge with reassurance. Uh, e, discharge with reassurance. Exactly. Suspect is capoid fracture, we put on future plan for two weeks, and then review the patient in the clinic. If there is a still tenderness, we'll do repeat the x-ray, and uh, continue the futura splint if the, the patient is normal. So he will be just discharged for reassurance. Next question. Dr. Sahar. Uh, 20 years old professional footballer is admitted to the emergency department during Tackle, uh, his leg is twisted uh, with knee flexion. Uh, he hears loud the crack and uh, his knee rapidly becomes swollen. What is the following structure is mean site of injury? Uh, anterior crochet ligament. My exactly. answer. Perfect. Why you did say that? Uh, Why it is not a meniscus? Knee flexion uh, and uh, rapidly a knee becomes swollen. Exactly. So for rapid uh, memorization, most common cause of anterior crochet or the mode of injury will be the knee flexed with twisting. <laughs> of the leg. Uh, for the posterior crochet will and uh, posterior crochet will be hyperextension of the leg and both of them will have both of them will have immediate uh, knee uh, swelling but in the meniscal tear the swelling of the knee will be a uh, few hours later. Okay? Okay. Next question.
Okay, Dr. Nashid. A 10-year-old boy is referred to the orthopedic clinic with symptoms of right knee pain. He has suffered pain for the past three months and the pain typically lasts for several hours. On examination, he works with an antalgic gait and has apparent right leg shortening. The right knee is normal, but the right hip reveals pain on internal and external rotation. Imaging shows flattening of the femoral head, which of the following is the most likely underlying diagnosis. Osteogenesis imperfecta, child abuse, osteosarcoma, osteopetrosis, Sparta's disease. Sparta's disease. Perfect, exactly. This is the age of Sparta's disease. And, uh, and this is the late image. That's why he told okay. you 10 years, a late um, radiographic sign of Sparta's disease will be flattening of the femoral head. Next. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Sahar, Dr. Nashid, go ahead. If anyone wants to share, just raise hand and I can stop and share. However, you go question by question. Okay, Dr. Sahar. Okay, what is the following is less likely to impair bone fracture healing? Mm, I think uh, uh, D. Prepare question of the Exactly. Uh, some questions are confusing. You have just to concentrate. Least likely to impair. So all of the following will going to impair bone it's fracture except the solidus therapy, osteoporosis, non-steroidals, and osteomyelitis all impair bone fracture healing except preservation of the periosteum on the uh, Controverse will promote healing better. So preservation of periosteum will promote healing. Next. An obese 14 year old boy presents with difficulty running and mild knee and hip pain. There is no antecedent history of trauma on examination. Internal attention is suspected that the knee is normal with full range of passive movement possible and no evidence of effusion. Both the C-reactive protein and white cell count are normal. What is the most likely cause? Split upper femoral epiphysis. Exactly. This is, uh, as I told yesterday, this is one of the most easiest questions that you will just answer after reading the first few um, words. Yeah. Obese, 14 years. Okay. Just have your eyes look direct to the uh, answer. You'll find slip upper femoral epiphysis, so I think so. It will be easy to answer the question even without completion of the uh, scenario. But just with your eye run, if you find any uh, strange word in the scenario, may change your mind. But this is the main uh, answer you will put in your mind and confirm it with reading of the scenario. Slept upper femoral ribs. Next. Dr. Sahar. Uh, 64 years old man is involved in motor vehicle accident is found to have humorous. What is this? Placid. What the are until for three weeks and then uh, commence physiotherapy? Uh, hemoarthroplasty, place in uh, reduce fracture and place an arm sling with repeated imaging uh, for 10 days. Uh, reduction under anesthesia and the place in collar and cuff system in six weeks. Mm. Uh, 
I think um, uh, reduction uh, fracture and the place in arm sling with the rebate image uh, 14 days. Any other this is intra-articular displaced fracture of humerus. Hemiarthroplasty. Uh, exactly, hemiarthroplasty. Okay, so this is the, we have two questions about the fracture of the um, shoulder. One is on this place, the fracture, we go for uh, a collar and cuff for three weeks, and one with displaced fracture will go for hemiarthroplasty. You haven't any other fractures or any other question regarding this topic again. Okay, so two questions easy to remind displaced hemiarthroplasty, undisplaced, place a collar and cuff, and commence early physiotherapy. Next question. A 70-year-old man undergoes a revision total hip replacement. Ten days post-operatively, the hip dislocates and pus is discharging from the wound. He is systematically, systemically well with a temper, unwell with a temperature of 38.5 and w, uh, white cell count uh, 19. Oh, what is the most appropriate course of action? Lay open wound and apply a back dressing, hindquarter amputation, Division arthroplasty, removal of metal work and bone grafting, removal of metal work and implantation of local antibiotic. Um, e, removal of metal work and implantation of an local antibiotic. Okay, exactly. Any metallic processes or any processes in the body which is infected should be removed instantly. Okay, whatever it was a mesh. It was the uh, cardiac processes. It was uh, a bone um, plate or or any uh, processes. Just infection happened should be removed and start on antibiotic. No bone grafting, nothing because this is maneuver which is potting bone will will get infected as well. So removal and implantation for local antibiotics and systemic antibiotics as well. Next. Okay. Dr. Sahar. Next after Dr. Nashid. Okay. 18 years old adult attend to orthopedic clinic reporting pain and the swelling over medial aspect of the knee joint. The pain occur when the camping the stair, but is not present when the working on the flat ground. Clinically, there is pain over medially, proximal tibia, and memory test is negative. What is the most likely cause of this patient symptoms? I think uh, medial meniscal injury. Is there any um, history of trauma in the scenario? Let's no. go this question. This is a new question, and I don't know the answer, and I'll go by its exclusion. Okay? Just have um, another way of thinking in a question first time to face. How to minimize my uh, options and start to guess what is the answer. Okay? So, this is a new question. Okay. You said, is there any history of trauma in the scenario? No. So what, what answers, what choices will you exclude? Uh, 
Nanti aku sudah mutiar Bidlan manifest nanti And It in your factor of tibia These are excluded Okay, so we excluded three Answers yeah. From the scenario Still pre patellar parasites And pis answerness Parasites What is the pain? Medial aspect of tibia Proximal, medial proximal okay. tibia so, okay, this is the site of what is, this is the site, what's called piss and cernus. Okay, yeah. this is the site of piss and cernus, which is the insertion of the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. Anatomically, this site is called piss and cernus. Okay, if peripatellar persites, the pain of the knee will be anteriorly, or in the center of the knee, or around the patella. But on the side of the knee will be the um, pes and cernus uh, area. So anyone know what we do with pes and cernus? It has um, a medical um, uh, medical importance. Okay, pis and cernus is one of the ligaments or supedic used to take to graft the cruciate ligament during repair. Okay, pis and cernus is the site, is a common origin for tendons of sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus, and it's a common site of, um, of grafting or taking a graft for the... Um, Cruciate ligament repair during arthroscopy. Next question. A 73 year old lady presents with pain in her left hip. She was walking around the house when she tripped over a rug and fell over. Apart from temporal arteritis, which is well controlled with prednisolone, she is otherwise well. On examination, her leg is shorten and externally rotated. Arterial alkaline phosphatase and calcium are normal. What is the likely underlying disease process? Paget's disease, metastatic renal cancer, osteoporosis, osteopetrosis, and osteoclastoma. Prednisolone, osteoporosis. Why? Uh, because uh, number one is age. It's like 73 year old lady and uh, she's on prednisolone. And it's like uh, she just, uh, it's like a pathological fracture, which may be due to osteoporosis. Exactly. And he excluded and here. What like is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. In, so uh, this is like in a common... disease. Sorry? I mean, um, like metastatic, if it, is, it would be metastatic, then alkaline phosphatase level and calcium level would be increased. And in Paget's disease also, alkaline phosphatase level is, level is increased. Uh, so these are like, thus it's excluded. And the scenario okay. doesn't so he, here he excluded it. Exactly, here he excluded uh -huh. with serum alkaline phosphatase and calcium are normal, which are common, common, um, a finding in osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Um, exactly, you have a station in part B uh, about this, about corticosteroid side effects. He will give you an old patient on temporal arthritis and taking um, uh, corticosteroids and she has a fracture and what is the most common and he will ask you what is the risk factor for osteoporosis in this lady? As you said, old age, female, corticosteroid therapy, post menopause. Okay, so old age, post menopause, on corticosteroid and um, uh, this is the risk factor for this patient. Okay, next question. Hello. 
Okay, Dr. Sahar. Uh, 72 years old, retired teacher, is admitted to emergency at uh, AA with the fall and hip pain. He is normally fit and well. He lives with his son in the Dichet Two Story House. Hip X ray and femur view confirm to subtrochanteric fracture. What is the best course of action? C. And cemented hemiarthroplasty. What is this fracture? A subtrochanteric fracture, a to total uh, hip replacement. Again, what is the best choice for a subtrochanteric fracture treatment? Uh, total hip replacement. Subtrochanteric. We are not talking about interarticular. Uh, insertion intramedullary nail. Exactly. Okay. Again and again. We have intramedullary nail. We have three types of fractures. We have intraarticular fracture. We have intertrochanteric fracture, and we have subtrochanteric fracture. Enter, capsular. If not displaced, we'll go for nails, nails and screws. Okay, nailing or uh, percutaneous spinning. If it is displaced, we will go for hemiarthroplasty or total arthroplasty according to the age and the activity of the patient. Enter through canteric fracture. We will go for what is called dynamic hip screw. See the angle of fixation. This is dynamic hip screw. This is a plate and this is a screw. Subtrochanteric fracture. We will go from here, what is called trochanteric fossa, and we will go for enter. Dullary nail. Okay. Please never forget again. It's a very easy question in the exam. Um, intertrochanteric, sorry, uh, intraarticular, intertrochanteric, and subtrochanteric fraction. Okay. Clear. Okay. Next question. A 28-year-old man falls on the back of his hand. On x-ray, he has a fractured distal radius demonstrating volar displacement of the fracture. What eponymous term is used to describe this? Smith's fracture. Smith's fracture. So fracture distal radius with a volar displacement is volar Smith's fracture. Okay. Exactly. 
next question David for Sahab 28 years old man complains of pain and weakness in the shoulder he has recently been unwell with the glandular fever from which he is fully recovered. On examination, there is some evidence muscle wasting and degree winging scapula. Power during active movement is impaired, which is most likely cause. Uh, Uh, calcified tendonitis? No. Uh, my answer is A. Exactly. It is a syndrome, personage Turner syndrome, which is a very common neuropathy that happens with a viral illness causing the uh, winging of scapula and um, weakness of the muscle of the uh, uh, of the shoulder sometimes whatever the muscle weakness which you will call personage turner syndrome some sort of peripheral neuropathy Next. Baby is Anyone wants to share? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, baby is delivered in uh, in the breech position. Burlows and autolani tests are normal. What is the most appropriate course of action? Reassure and discharge the patient. Reassess the patient in, in at three years. Arrange a hip USS. Uh, arrange a hip. Uh, arrange a hip X-ray. Arrange a hip CT scan. Mm. Arrange a hip USS. Hip, ultrasound, yes, exactly. Ultras ultrasound. So as we told the same yesterday, the first six months with any patient delivered in preach position, we do um, a hip uh, ultrasound. For what we are afraid from? DDH. Exactly, DDH. Next, Dr. Sahar. Uh, 22 years, man is shot in the back in the lumbar region. He is in grease tone and hyperreflexia of right leg. He cannot feel his left leg. What is the most likely explanation? Um, my answer is D. Brown's squared syndrome. Okay, what is brown squared syndrome? Exactly, it is right. Okay, we will face this question again in trauma and the emergency about injuries of the spinal cord. One of them is brown square which is injury wait hemisection of the spinal cord exactly which is injury of the spinal cord hemi injury it's cutting hemisection of the spinal cord 
which you the patient will lose motor movement on the same side and and the same will proprioception and fine touch and you will lose this is motor loss and he will lose um, temperature and um, sorry pain and temperature sensation on the contralateral side. Okay, so contralateral pain and temperature and the motor on the same side will be lost because pain and temperature fibers go and across to the other side through the spinal cord and motor fibers go and go directly up go directly up don't cross and cross in the pyramidal track on the pyramidal uh, cruciate in the midbrain so he will lose the motor function on the epsilateral side and he will lose temperature and pain sensation on the contralateral side yes we we have two more injuries we will face in trauma and the emergency department when we go for the Next. Dr. Nashit, okay. A 19 year old female presents to the clinic with progressive pain in her neck and back. The condition has been progressively worsening for over the first, past six mm -hmm. months. She has not presented uh, previously because she was an uh, inpatient uh, with a uh, she, she was an inpatient with a disease flare of ulcerative colitis. On examination, she has a stiff back with uh, limited spinal extension on being on bending forward. Mm, what is the most likely explanation for this process? Spondylolysis, spondylolisthesis, functional scoliosis, Stewart-Mann's disease, ankylosing spondylitis. It's E, ankylosing spondylitis. Exactly, young female. Um, sometimes tell you athletic and with neck and back pain and limited mobility of the back it is the most common cause will be ankylosing spondylitis mm -hmm. by the way ankylosing spondylitis is associated with HALA human leukocytic antigen B27 because sometimes this question comes, we will face it again in, um, I think, um, some some question maybe in the trauma or something like this, um, or congenital disease, HALAT P27, and it is strongly associated with inflammatory bowel disease, especially ulcerative colitis. Okay. Next question, Dr. Sahar. A Fifty years old man is admitted after falling from scaffolding. He has open fracture of tibia with. 15 centimeter wound. He is neurovascular intact. What is the best initial course of action? Uh, intravenous antibiotic, photographic and application, saline salted goes with embryonic dressing through phone department and emergency department. Combined skeletal and soft tissue reconstructive on scheduled operating list. Application external fixation uh, and conservation to internal fixation after two weeks, immediately skeletal stabilization and application negative pressure dressing. Uh, I think um, the application external fixator and conversion to internal fixation after two weeks. 
Okay, this is exactly the definite treatment. But here he is asking about the best initial course of action. Uh, a, intravenous antibiotic. Okay, it's clear now. And yesterday I said, and I told you about this question. I told you, you will have another one, which will tell you initial course of action. And he will give you in the options, intravenous antibiotics and cleaning of the wound. And we had a question yesterday, which is, he mentioned in the scenario that intravenous antibiotics and application of saline and saline soap cause and the bridement has been done. What is the definite course of action? That it was application of external fixator and uh, preparation for internal fixation on the nearest um, list or after two weeks. But here he told you what is the initial course of action, okay? So when you find Agastello classification with open wound. Grade 3C. Grade 3. Uh, B. B. B or A? He, he, he didn't say enough tissue uh, or coverage or something. He didn't say. So it is Gastello 3, B, A or B. So um, when you see, just go direct. Does he mention in the question that, uh, that he made intravenous antibiotic and primary care and uh, the bridement, or he didn't mention? He's asking about the initial or asking about the definite treatment. Next question. A 65 year old type two diabetic with poor glycemic control is admitted with four foot cellulitis. X-ray of the foot shows some evidence of osteomyelitis affecting the second ray but overlying skin is healthy. What is the best treatment initially? Intravenous antibiotic, below knee amputation, transfemoral amputation, mid foot amputation, ray amputation. Initially, intravenous antibiotic. Exactly, osteomyelitis is a very common problem in diabetic patients and we go direct for uh, uh, intravenous uh, antibiotics unless there is any uh, bone uh, fractures or any uh, uh, skin or soft tissue necrosis or gangrene, we will go for another option. Okay, so what is the most common organism for osteomyelitis? Staph aureus. Staph aureus. Perfect. Perfect, exactly. Staph aureus is the most common cause of osteomyelitis and in Sickle cell disease. Uh, salmonella. Salmonella type. Per perfect. Ajay wants to share. Uh, the common, the commonest organism is staph aureus. But in, in sickle cell patients, the commonest, the commonest organism is still staph aureus. But a patient with a salmonella infection is more likely to be a sickle cell patient. Sorry? The commonest organism, even in a sickle cell patient, is still staph aureus. Okay, staph aureus is the most common, is the most common in all categories, okay? But here in MRCS, he, when he But in patient you, with um, categories, yeah, yes. When he tell you the patient with sickle cell disease, uh, comes um, the salmonella, one of the most common organisms here. Sometimes in the, in the answer, he will not mention staph aureus as well. Okay, so just put in mind, correlate between sickle cell disease and salmonella infection. Okay. Between osteomyelitis, okay? Yes. I know 
staph aureus is the most common in all categories. But yes, relation between Salmonella and sickle cell disease is very common relation. Yes, okay. Yes. That, that, yes. That, that. Okay. Thank you. Go for the next that question. Works. Okay. Okay, Dr. Nashid. With which of the conditions listed below is a heel saturation classically associated? Uh, fracture of the surgical neck of humerus, glenohumeral dislocation, supraspinal steer, acroclavicular dislocation, acromioclavicular dislocation, sternoclavicular dislocation. It's glenohumeral dislocation. Exactly. Heel sacs lesion. You will find this is the only question you have in MRCS. And this is the only answer. So there is nothing confusing with this. There is no other um, related question, so confuse you. When you find in the exam, Hill Sachs or Hill Sachs lesion, you go direct for glenohumeral dislocation. Okay, this is, you have some questions uh, during your studies that have no um, relations, has no relatives, so confuse you. So this is one of them. Hill sacs equals glenohumeral dislocation. Next question. You almost going to finish. Dr. Sahar, go. 20 years old women, trips over step, injury, hair, ankle, examination, refill, tenderness of her lateral malleolus, and it is ray demonstration and displaced fracture distal to centimosis. What is the best course of action? Application of ankle pod, surgical fixation, application for leg blaster cast, application external fixator, application bizarro mm, I think... Uh, Mm, application uh, for leg blaster cast. For leg for distal fibular fracture and displaced. Uh, you will sorry, let the yeah. patient. Yeah. Application of ankle boots. Perfect. This is a very simple fracture in a young patient, 20 year. He has the tip of the fibula, lateral malleolus fracture and displaced you will go for conservative treatment with ankle boot. So what is this uh, fracture classified as? What is this the name of classification of Weber, this fracture? Uh, Weber uh, classification. Weber. Weber classification. Which type? A. Type A, exactly. Perfect. So this is Weber, type A fracture. Go direct for... Um, conservative treatment with ankle boot and the send the small distal to the send the smosis, which is intact and not disrupted. Next question. Dr. Nashid. A 56 year old lady presents with a painful swelling over the lower end of the forearm following a fall. Imaging reveals a distal radial fracture with disruption of the distal radial joint. What is the uh, most likely uh, fracture? Uh, distal radial fracture and distal radial joint. Galeazy fracture. Perfect. Exactly. We said yesterday, distal radius is lateral. Whatever the, uh, the uh, radial joint, so radius fracture will be lateral. So it will be galeazy. Ulnar fracture which is medial, which medial will be Montageous. Montageous fracture. Perfect. Okay, this question has repeated some, a repeated question was a different scenario. Okay. Dr. Sahar, go. 10 years old boy undergo of delayed open reduction and fixation of significantly displaced supracondylar fracture. On the ward, complaints significant for arm pain and paresthesia of the hand. Radial pulse is normal. What is the most uh, appropriate course of action? Persiotomy, arrange CT and you, provide strong analgesia, arrange 
heat lamp x-ray arrange for arm duplex scan uh, i think uh, provide the strong analgesia what's your diagnosis here Mm, Faultman. No, Faultman is something like late. Com compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome, exactly. So, what's your uh, action, course of action, when you suspect compartment syndrome? Fasciotomy. Emergent fasciotomy. Emergent fasciotomy. Yes, emergent. In part B, Oski, you have to tell the examiner emergent fasciotomy. You don't say fasciotomy, he'll tell you which, which list, okay. next list, the morning list. No, emergent fasciotomy. No. Don't wait no. for absent pulse. He tell you here, radial pulse is normal because absent pulse is the last thing to be affected in compartment syndrome. And when it is affected, so you can uh, expect muscle necrosis and muscle this. Okay, so fasciotomy, this is compartment syndrome, and you'll go for emergent fasciotomy. fasciotomy. So pain, tenderness, pain, and tense swelling with paresthesia is a main feature or one of the earliest feature or compartment syndrome. And you'll find compartment syndrome in two main regions, fracture ulna or radius, and fracture tibia or fibula, because this is the most tense compartments in the body, the leg and the forearm. So fracture radius, fracture ulna, fracture fibula, and the fracture tibia, all these fracture when closed, it is associated with compartment syndrome. Next question, I have five questions left. Okay, next, Dr. Nashid. Yes, a builder falls from scaffolding and lands on his left hand. Uh, he suffers a severe laceration to his thumb. An X-ray shows evidence of scaffold fracture that is minimally distressed. What is the most appropriate course of action? Um, uh, application of future splint, discharge with reassurance, admission and uh, surgical debridement, application of below elbow cast and reviewing six weeks, application of tubic grip bandage and fracture clinic uh, review. Um, careful, okay. Severe laceration, uh, okay. Admission and surgical debridement. Exactly. So this is, there is laceration of the hand with fracture. So the patient would go for debridement. Yeah. Department first and then the management of the fracture. Yes, this will be uh, later, but just because it is an open fracture yes. and maybe dirty fracture. So this is the most appropriate course of action means the um, next, yeah. Course, next thing. action or initial, yeah. Initial, you will make the bridegroom mm -hmm. and then we later will see for the definite management, which will be fixation. Next question, Dr. Sahar. What is the following is not typical seen in patient with femoral neck to fracture? Very common question and came for me in April exam. Okay. My answer, malunion. Exactly, there is no malunion in femoral neck. If it is displaced, will happen. Um, no, Dr. Nash, not non-union. No, no. It's, it's okay. Non not okay. typically seen in patients. So it is less likely to happen. So non-union happens if there is displacement because cutting of the blood supply. Then we'll progress for avascular necrosis. Then we'll progress for shortening. And then will happen external rotation from malunion from non-union, but malunion, it doesn't happen. If cutting of the blood supply happens, okay. mm -hmm. so there will be complete non-union, no malunion in the Okay, 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन a 6 year old boy present with pain in the hip it is present on activity and has been worsening over the past few weeks there is no history of trauma he was born by normal vaginal delivery at 38 week gestation on examination he has an antalgic gait and limitation of active and passive movement of the hip joint in all directions c reactive protein is mildly elevated at 10 but the white cell count is normal what is the most likely diagnosis what is this sorry uh what uh, is disease persis disease yeah okay 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 so here he wanted to confuse you even even me i don't know the answer but i want back to the uh, question again so i said normal vaginal delivery i didn't find any breach delivery so i went back to the question so it is persisties okay but exactly yeah. next to rasahar to ibrahim yes to the meeting in the last two questions yalla last two <laughs> question dr ibrahim yalla last two question dr ibrahim yalla shan you you you, you should share in our uh, uh, station today yeah but i i am just now coming from the work and i'm on call now okay we no. we are sorry for starting late uh, or early no. and then you no problem yeah, 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 it is yeah, a... i want to ask to 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 start it early and about 6 or 7 pm uh, I, i finish work at 9 o'clock i'll try to start at work when i'm free so mm. uh, i will be managed soon inshallah okay inshallah. so go for the next two questions last two okay. questions three years old doing the clear fall from his ladder is lands on his left arm and notice ruthless injury x-ray on the clinical examination demonstrate that this fracture in proximal ulna and associated radial dislocation which and was name used to describe this injury <coughs> fracture in proximal ulna <coughs> this may be a semi structure oh <laughs> really i don't know montesia montesia exactly okay this is montesia fracture because no. you we we face montesia fracture okay we face this question many times since yesterday and they get used to answer it we say again mm -hmm. any fracture of ulna or radius associated with radio ulnar dislocation whatever it is proximal or distal we just look to which bone is fractured so if radius is fractured the radius is laterally so z uh, yes a, a eponymous name will be gliese fracture if the ulna is fractured of the the ulna is fractured the ulna is medial so it will be a montage fracture whatever whatever is this okay don't disrupt your uh, mind with type of this radio ulna dislocation proximal distal or uh, is the ulnar fracture is proximal or distal just put in your mind this it is medial ulna so montage <laughs> lateral <laughs> radius so gliese fracture gliese fracture Okay. 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 Thank you for notification. Okay. So next question, last question. For I me also. Last. <laughs> yes. Yani. <laughs> no, then we still have fourteen question more. Yalla, go. Yes. <laughs> 
a 40 years woman admitted her being unable to his pipe as an open fracture in his tibia. This is a little one, not a proper part of the brotherhood. I don't know if it has been administrated for emerging development and the wound has been dressed, which is a course for the previous prescription. I made the escape to see what I see. The application of the pressure facing. Robotics photograph application, survey and soak the rules in the dressing. Theater fixation for the rest Construction, intermediate amputation, immunal vascular shunting, should be timber skeletal stabilization and vascular constriction. <clears throat> I think uh, E. Exactly. So, what is the classification of this? Um, okay, it is written in the answer. 3C. 3C. And 3C will go for immediate vascular intervention and external fixation for further treatment. But in Gastello 3C, there is a neurovascular bundle injury and vascular intervention should be early as possible. Okay, would you like to continue or it's enough? It's, uh... How many questions uh, would continue? We still have, um, I think, 14. Someone is writing. Please undo the writing. Someone undo the writing, please. So. Okay. Want to continue or it's enough? Yeah, continue. It's better to continue. Okay. So, who's going to go for the next question? Okay, Dr. Nashid. Okay. A 58 year old man present to the plastic team with severe burn to his hands. He is not distressed by the burn. He has bilateral charcot joint. On examination, there is loss of pain and temperature sensation of the upper limbs. What is the most likely diagnosis? Both diseases of the spine, tape dorsalis, transverse myelitis, serenchomalia, and subacute degeneration of the cord. I think it's D. Exactly. This is uh, uh, one also of the um, sporadic questions that you will uh, face. Um, Severe burns, the patient, one of the complications of severe burns of the hand, and the patient will lose the pain and temperature sensation of the upper limb. This is what's called syringe myelia or malicia. Next question. Dr. Zahar. 22 years old rugby player falls on two outstretched hand and sustained fracture of the distal radius. The X-ray showed dorsal angulated community the fracture. What is the most appropriate management? Uh, reduce under hematoma block and the place and plaster. Admitted for open reduction and internal fixation. Reduce using Pairs, black and the place in plaster. Cast, discharge home with arm sling and review fracture clinic. Discharge home with future splint and fracture clinic. Uh, admission uh, to for uh, open reduction and internal fixation. Perfect, exactly. So, any comminuted fracture? with um, displacement will 
uh, we will need for open reduction and internal fixation. Okay, next question. Dr. Brahim, if you want to share, you just raise hand. And then go Dr. Nashid. Dr. Nashid, go ahead. Okay, a uh, one year old is brought to the emergency department with a history of failure to drive. On examination, the child is small for her age and has a large head. X-ray shows a cupped appearance of the epiphysis of the wrist. What is the most likely diagnosis, most likely called? Osteoporosis, Ehlers and loss, Marfan, rickets, non-accidental injury. It's rickets. Perfect. So cupped appearance of the epiphysis of the wrist is one of the um, uh, radiographic radiological features, radiological features of crickets. Next question. Okay, Dr. Sahar or Dr. Nashid, go. Uh, on the list below, what is the nut cause of vascular necrosis? Uh, I think uh, Kaizen disease. I don't know what this guy's on disease. So if he if he if he bring for you unknown disease, mostly it's something right. He just wants you to, to yes, it's myeloma. It's myeloma. Uh, because of vascular okay, this question come like as it is. What's well, I, I and I didn't see it in recalls frequently, but I think um, maybe one time so not a cause of avascular necrosis is myeloma, steroids, sickle cell disease, and radiotherapy, and the case, case on disease. All of these the cause. Disease, um, actually, actually, it occurs in. It is what? Uh, case on disease. Col case on disease college, occurs college in first. divers, the deep sea divers. And they are at risk of, uh, like, uh, the, in case of disease, there occurs uh, what called uh, ear embolism because uh, due to the pressure difference when they're inside the water and suddenly they uh, comes up. So that, uh, due to this pressure difference, uh, they are at risk of ear embolism. And also maybe due to mm -hmm. this vascular necrosis. Okay, because, here is, is, is on, something on, related to... Embolus. Yes, ex exactly. I, I got you. So this is what's called collagen vascular disease. So that's maybe related to our case here. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Dr. Nashid. A 63-year-old lady undergoes an ADL clearance for breast cancer. She makes steady progress. However, eight weeks post-operatively, she still suffers from severe shoulder pain. Uh, on examination, she has reduced active uh, movement in all sense and uh, loss of passive external rotation. What is the most likely cause? Uh, metastatic cancer, adhesive capsulitis, and rotator cuff tear, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid disease. Adhesive capsulitis. Uh, adhesive capsulitis. Exactly from the pain of the axillary pain and the patient has um, uh? restricted movement. So it's not a good she will go for uh, adhesive capsulites. Okay. Capsulite. So, next. Okay, Dr. Ibrahim, unmute yourself. I, I will tell this one. 
34 years old man present with localized spinal pain over two months, which is worsened to a movement. He is known to be an IVQ. He has no history suggested of tuberculosis. The vein is now <clears throat> circulating at the rest and, none, and not improving with analgesia. He has temperature 39. What is the most likely diagnosis? Transversal myelitis, osteomyelitis, both disease, epidural hematoma, brown square syndrome. I think both disease of the spine. Why? It's exacerbating pain, uh, high fever. There is no, okay, there is no history mm. suggestive of tuberculosis. Brown squirrel syndrome. Okay, you mm. face a I'm new question sure. and you don't. Okay, you face a new question and I face a new question and I don't know the answer. And I'm just going for the answer to minimize um, to minimize my options as I'm going now. So first one is transverse myelites, maybe. Second one, osteomyelites, maybe. Mm. Both <clears throat> disease in the questions, they tell me no history of, or no history suggestive mm. of tuberculosis. And then epidural hematoma. There is no history of nice epidural of anesthesia. Mm. Epidural even, or uh, anesthesia or trauma. Brown square syndrome also. This is a traumatic spinal cord. And so mm. I have two options, transverse myelites and osteomyelites. Okay. Mm. Intravenous drug users are very common uh, source mm -hmm. of hematogenous infection. Hematogenous infection from endoling uh, needle using and sometimes shearing needles. Mm -hmm. Shearing mm. needles. So it's very common to have uh, infections like HIV, uh, hepatitis C virus, and hematogenous infection to the bone like osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Exactly. It is Osteomyelitis is the most common happen for a patient with intravenous drug yes. user. <clears throat> okay. Okay, continue. Next question. 19 years old female involved in a athletic event has just completed the high jump when he suddenly developed severe back pain and weakness affecting both her legs. In the examination, he has prominent sacrum and the hair lower back is painful. What's the most likely underlying cause? Structural scoliosis, enclosing spondylitis. Uh, so what's it? Scrumal disease, spondyl spondylolysis, and spondylolysis. Mm, I think D, spondylolysis. Exactly. Okay, this is some sort of degeneration of the vertebral bone. Okay, and um, happens with a athletic patient and you will find the scenario as it is young female athletic after a high jump she has this problem and we have what's called spondylolysis which is just this degeneration spondylolysis is a slipping of one vertebra over the underlying vertebra which will compress the spinal cord okay okay <clears throat> we have a good picture for the spondylolysis and the spondylitis i said and zero. Okay, would you like to continue or change? Change. Okay, Dr. Nashid. A 54 year old man uh, presents to the emergency department with a two day history of a swollen, painful left knee. You 
aspirate the joint to avoid admission to the orthopedic foot. Aspirated joint fluid shows calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Which of the following blood tests is most useful in revealing an underlying cause? Mm, transparent saturation, SCTH, NA, terampiridine, and uh, LDH. It's A, I guess. It's A, transparent saturation. Okay, exactly right. Okay, so this is uh, what's called. Sorry. Uh, uh, this is what's called pseudo gout. It's the pseudo gout. Yeah. Exactly. If the cause Elevated is hematomatic, trans... then we will get the transparent saturation. Okay, and we have to uh, differentiate between pseudo gout and the gout, and we will find maybe um, uh, face this problem and. Infection, microicing, something like this. Uh, the difference between gout and pseudo gout. This is uh, the uh, here is uh, calcium pyrophosphate. Here is in pseudo gout, and in gout will be urates. Uh, in pseudo gout will be rhomboid like. In pseudo gout, in gout will be needle like. And the positive perfringe will be weak positive in. I can't remember exactly, but I'll send you the difference yeah, between gout and pseudo gout. Yeah, and the affected joint, joint is the big joint and pseudo gout and small in joint in gout. In like break to in gout. Break to is in gout, exactly. Yeah, just to know, I'll send you at the latter also. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question, Dr. Asahar. A tall, 80 years old male athlete is admission to emergency room after being hit at uh, the knee by hockey stick. On examination, his knee is tense and swollen. X-ray show no fracture. What is the diagnosis? Dislocated patellary, quadriceps tendon rupture, patellary fracture, chondromalacia, patellae, a vaginal fracture of tibial tubercle. Mm, I think uh, E, a vulgar fracture of the tibial tubercle. So, what's your answer again? Quadriceps mm, tendon rupture? No, he didn't mention that he lost leg flexion, extension, sorry. So this is tense. Dislocated patella. Exactly, dislocated patella. So we have, this is a swollen knee and we have any problem, one of two problems, even fracture patella or dislocated patella. So X-ray shows no fracture. So the problem will be dislocation of the patella. Okay, next question, Dr. Ibrahim. Okay, <clears throat> 65 years old, yes, young female, breathing an extra capsular neck of femur fracture. Investigation show calcium 2.07, phosphate 0.66, alkaline phosphate is 2.56 internationally. What's the most likely diagnosis? Bone tuberculosis, hypobarotherism. Myeloma, stomalacia, based disease. Calcium is low, phosphate normal, low. Mm. This based disease. High alkaline uh, phosphate is. Hypoparathyroidism. No. Why are my alkaline phosphates will be high? <coughs> this increase was... Uh, okay. Low, low calcium. Water. Low calcium. Low Just phosphate. Malaysia. With high alkaline phosphates. Stimulation. Okay. I'll send you how to differentiate between these three. Stimulation, package disease, Hypothyroidism, 
bone metastasis. I'll send you a, a, a table. So how you can differentiate between this because you'll have another question with bone metastasis and you'll have another one. We had already another one with osteoporosis. When he tell you normal calcium and phosphate and alkaline phosphatase, so this is osteoporosis. Low calcium and low phosphate with high alkaline phosphatase is um, okay. osteomalacia. High alkaline phosphatase and sometimes high calcium, it will be bone metastasis, one of the paraneoplastic syndromes, bone metastasis. Okay? okay. I'll send you the table after finishing. And if I okay. forget someone, just to remind me. Okay, next, Dr. Nashid. A 15-year-old boy present to the outpatient clinic with tiredness, recurrent throat and chest infection, and gradual loss of vision. Multiple X-rays show brittle bone with no differentiation between the cortex and medulla. What is the most likely diagnosis? Brickett, osteomalacia, osteopetrosis, Ehlers-Danlos type 3, osteogenesis imperfecta. It's osteopetrosis. Why? Why? Because uh, your keyword here. Uh, there is no difference. There is no uh, uh, lack of differentiation between the cortex and medulla. And uh, it's like 15 year old. So in uh, pediatric department, we have studied the osteogenesis imperfecta and osteopetrosis. Rickett. Uh, Rickett is not the case. Uh, so in, among the osteopetrosis, osteogenesis imperfecta, in, osteopet in osteopetrosis, the, there is lack of differentiation between okay, the cortex so and medulla. Brittle bones. And bone with... formation in future. Okay, brittle bone with no differentiation okay. between the cortex and medulla. This is pathognomonic for yeah. osteopetrosis. And what's its name? Osteopetrosis. Sorry? Marble bone disease. Marble bone disease, yes, exactly. Bone Perfect. Disease. Okay, that's what's called marble bone. So it is just differentiation, lack of differentiation between the cortex and the medulla with brittle bones. This is pathognomonic for osteopetrosis in young patients. Next question, Dr. Sahar. In pediatric orthopedic surgery, which is the following does not level pro heart criteria for septic arthritis? Is R more than 40 millimeter per hour, bit of blood culture, fever, WBC count uh, 12, uh, no weight bearing on affected side? Uh, I think uh, my answer non weight bearing on affected side. Do you know Cohort's criteria? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so your answer? Non-white pairing on a fitted side. No, it is, it is one of the Cohort's criteria. Uh, positive blood culture? Exactly. So. Cohort's criteria is mm. TLC and ESR plus fever plus inability to wait beer. But post blood culture is not a criteria of it. Next question, Dr. Brahim. <clears throat> An infant is admitted with symptoms and sign of this bacterial infection and is found to have several, several posterior rib fracture and chest radiograph. He was born prematurely at 37 weeks gestation and he was observed overnight on the special care baby unit for tachypnea, which silted by following the day. An assessment is also a and that his head circumference has increased and an excessive rate and his and he has crossed three since birth. What is the most likely underlying cause? Accidental fracture, back disease, myeloprophetic disorder, non accidental injury, osteomalacia. <clears throat> Okay, 
Mnohé z troch trúme, však som to fakšal, takže... Non-accidental injury, by exclusion. I think that by exclusion, non-accidental injury. As no is to trauma, basic disease, and a beer early in infant, I don't think so. No is no is to Malaysia. So my answer is D. Non-accidental injury? Yeah. It's by exclusion, I mean. Anyone has a different answer? Okay. Exactly. So this is a rib fracture on new nets is very common. Okay, so it is non accidental injury. It may be account by hydrocephalus, which may occur as a sequel from head injury. Okay, so non accidental injury is the right answer. Okay. <clears throat> okay, last question, Dr. Ibrahim also. Okay. Five years old boy is playing in a tree when he's full and the lands on his right forearm. It brought in the to the emergency department by his parents. On examination he has bony tenderness and bruising. X rays taken and show unilateral cortical disruption and volumen osteal hematoma. What's the most likely diagnosis? Buccal fracture, genetic fracture. Tolder's fracture, complete fracture, none of the above. Is green stick fracture? Green stick fracture, exactly. What is the difference between green stick and buckles fracture? The green stick is the... Okay, green stick fracture is fracture one side of the one side of the cortex of the bone, one side of the cortex, and part of the fracture just supraosteal hematoma. Only only the hematoma, only the supraosteal hematoma. Only hematoma. Buckles, buckles of fracture is only only hematoma. Okay, exactly. Okay. Okay, I think we finished. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, for next, I think we'll start vascular or urology. I'll uh, inform you tomorrow by this. Thank you and okay. wish you good luck and study well. Okay, good night. Okay, good night, Doctor. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night, Doctor. Bye. Good night.